As communities worldwide grapple with the consequences of climate change, we seek to uncover the stories of leaders, pioneers and experts who are spearheading efforts to adapt and transform their environments. Our journey takes us to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. It's a city literally built on water and emblematic of the struggle against rising temperatures. But the city also stands as a beacon of innovation, resilience and solutions that can be scaled elsewhere. Uh, Amsterdam is an international city, there's a lot of things happening, but it's also not, not that a big city, so if you can make something work in Amsterdam, you could also maybe scale it up. We really want to have an impact not only on the environment, but also on the society and the places where we are operating. Um, I would say we share the common goals that the city of Amsterdam has as well, with their uh, plan to get the whole of Amsterdam, the entirety of Amsterdam, off gas in 2040. Uh, and according to our plans, it's going to happen a lot earlier. Even we are very much exposed to the rising seawater levels, people th still think it's really far away. But for now, to really fight climate change, you need to do stuff. And uh, there's no time to wait. By sharing the stories of these leaders and experts, we want to inspire collective action and support sustainability and social justice in urban areas. From operating the city's biggest wind turbine to generating energy from canal water and waste from a soccer stadium in Amsterdam, business leaders, scientists and communities work to future-proof their city for the challenges of climate change. How does the city push for groundbreaking solutions and innovations to keep it livable? How does this impact the people living in Amsterdam? Who are the drivers of the energy transition and how do they collaborate? Let's hear from Eline Veltuis, a community organizer at the Energy Cooperative Kedelaus VG, supported by the city. This community initiative, nestled in a historic neighborhood of Amsterdam, will pilot an energy transition project using aquathermia, where heat is extracted from surface water. So aquathermia is the uh, technology that we're using as a source of renewable energy and heating explicitly. So the way it works is that the sun warms up uh, the canal water, that, which is in the vicinity of the terrain, um, to about 80 to 20 degrees. Then we suck in that water and store it very uh, deep below ground, about 250 meters below ground, uh, which is done just by putting it in a long pipe. And then uh, in winter when we need it, we suck it back, in, back up. Then we uh, add another 60 degrees to it, and then we distribute it to about 1250 living and working units that we've got here on VG Terrain. In the Netherlands, more than 50 aquathermia systems are now operating in newly built neighbourhoods based on heat from surface water. So the area is very unique, uh, especially for looking at uh, sustainable solutions uh, for the climate crisis. Um, there, has, uh, there are cooperatives in other areas of the country that are, doing, uh, are using aquathermia like we are but never has it been done in an area with such um, big range in uh, the building area or the building years of the buildings. We've got some late 19th century buildings and we've got buildings that are only uh, built about 10 to 20 years ago. And that's why we are a pilot project for the whole of the country. And then basically, if it works here, you can do it in any city. Civic participation is crucial in all processes. Ketelhaus VG also shows the significance of a bold political structure in providing the backbone for these efforts. However, to meet the high climate ambitions of Amsterdam, everyone has to play a role. This is especially true for the many business leaders and entrepreneurs. And this is where the NDSM Energy Cooperative comes in. With its headquarter in NDSM Shipyard in Amsterdam North End, NDSM Energy has been a cooperative since 2013. It brings together 60 companies from all over Amsterdam. Members are green pioneers and doers at the forefront of green initiatives. The purpose is to develop sustainable energy initiatives focused on energy savings generation and supply. The vision is to be self-sufficient in 2030 by generating their own renewable energy. So what we're uh, setting up is not windmills, but wind turbines. They will be 200 meters high. Sort of Holland is 60 meters rotating, so it's going to be huge. And they will be actually the largest buildings in Amsterdam, the largest constructions. There's nothing higher than those. The wind turbines will generate the electricity, it will feed in the local grid. It can go to homes, it can go to schools, it can go to companies. It's the equivalent of 20,000 homes 
or maybe a hundred companies, depending on the size of the company. So what our idea, our dream is to be uh, energy independent in 2030 and our uh, wind turbines are a clear contribution to that. The round, about 200 meter high turbines might become an iconic feature of the city's landscape. The Johan Cruyff Arena, home of soccer club Ajax Amsterdam, already has one. On a normal match day, um, the Johan Cruyff Arena hosts around 55,000 people. You can imagine how much organic waste is produced in this type of context. So what we decided to do is that uh, we wanted to create an on-site modular anaerobic digestion system that is able to process food waste exactly where the food waste is produced. And here is where the magic happens because uh, here is where bacteria are uh, processing and digesting organic waste and producing methane as a byproduct. The main outputs of our installation are biogas, which can be transformed into electricity and heat, and a natural liquid fertilizer. We decided to place it here because the Young Cry Farina is a pioneer when it comes to future technology and to future-proof technology. The energy transition in Amsterdam is not only accelerated by the city itself, science is on board too. From the scientific base of the University of Amsterdam, Sustainalab enables cross-fertilization between companies, governments, NGOs, citizens and academia. I think we need a common understanding of the transitions we are, uh, uh, we are facing and I think that's step A, the, the first step to take. And if you are clear about the transitions that are needed, then you can come up with the right solutions. It's very important to uh, take um, uh, specific transitions that we're looking for uh, uh, in mobility or in energy or in how we feed the world in a, in a sustainable way and really connect around these transitions to come up with well, solutions for these transitions. Amsterdam is a city that leads the way thanks to ambitious people who are driving the energy transition forward for their city, for the residents, for the businesses and for the common future. Through a shared understanding of the necessary changes, they've set ambitious goals and timelines for the various solutions through joint exchange and collaboration. They are taking innovative pathways to shape the future together.